If you had to choose one present, which one would you choose? You don't know what is inside the box, and you really don't know what you're getting with the vehicle, but do you really know if the Corvette is a sweet ride or just a really small Hot Wheels car? Do you think your method or way that you would choose your present would change if you were a scientist? What if you had to choose between hundreds of clams for an experiment? How would you make your decision? All scientists, whether they are forensic scientists like in CSI or field scientists like Jacques Cousteau, try to be objective. When you chose your present, did you think that you were being objective? What is objectivity? Is objectivity the truth or knowledge of something? Is objectivity how you think about something? Or how you look at something? What I see may be very different than what you see. Objectivity is the ability to perceive or describe something, in this case choose something, without your personal bias and motivations influencing your decision. My name is Rebecca Wayne. I am working on a project with Dr. John Scarpa at Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute at Florida Atlantic University. We are working to increase our knowledge of aquaculture through experimentation. You see, aquaculture may not be known by all, but it is critical to the future of our country. The population of the world is increasing at an exponential rate. The oceans and the land are not changing in size or their ability to produce a larger quantity of food. Without food we are, oh, well let's just say we would be in a terrible predicament. This brings in aquaculture. Aquaculture is our ability to grow seafood without harming or counting on the oceans to do it for us. Dr. Scarpa has been studying clams for many years thanks to support from the Florida Sea Grant. He wants to diversify the number of species that can be cultured. To do this, we must test the different species of clams to identify their ability to withstand different levels of salt in the water. This is called salinity. We also need to test their ability to withstand changes in water temperature. This is called thermal tolerance. In Florida, we have hurricanes which drop a lot of water into our estuaries. This changes the salt levels of the water and we have extremely hot summers. This is called heat tolerance. If animals cannot hot handle these extremes, then we will not be able to grow them in Florida. In order to test for salinity and thermal tolerance, we set up different experiments and we try different things. This brings us back to objectivity. Scientists have safeguards to ensure that the science they are doing is as objective as possible. Special tools such as the Vernier digital caliper can be used to keep measurements objective. When designing our experiment, we used a random number and selection process to choose our clams, tanks, and salinity treatments for each group. This removed all personal bias or subconscious selection while we set up our experiment. We also had an experimental design meeting where many scientists talk and decide the best way to set up, test, and maintain the animals throughout the experiment. We also opened up our experiment to peer review to correct for any subjectivity. Subjectivity is the opposite of objectivity. You see, scientists are human too. Dr. Scarpa may have chosen the Corvette, or one of his peers may have chosen a smaller wrap box. You never know what motivates someone in their choice, and that is why in science we strive to stay as objective as possible.